Good evening, everyone. It is the 6th of August, it's about 8.30. We're out to get close to 9 o'clock at night. Preparing this for in the morning, and we are planning on having a um, house church service in the morning. Probably be around 10 o'clock, I would think. Uh, so we'll have that on our platforms later on in the day. And then Mark and I have a Bible study tomorrow night, continuing in the studies um, in the book of John, where Tom Adams and I left off. And um, Tom and Tori, if you hear this, we wish you the best and hope you're having a successful weekend. I got an um, email today from Walt. Um, I guess he listened to my devotional this morning. Um, I got an email, many of you know, uh, from Adiola asking me to take him off of my email list, which I, I am not emailing him any longer. Um, and I've been thinking about some of the people from our past that we no longer hear from, you know, Louise Reeves, uh, uh, Edward Henry, Carl Roberts, Kevin McHugh, Mark Kennedy, Michael Smith, Just to name a few. <laughs> okay, just to name a very few. <clears throat> um, Mike Orr and I are planning on having a time of fellowship Wednesday night. I'm not sure if I will record it or not. He wants to do a study on prayer, which I've done several messages on prayer. And so... Mark will also join us on that call, Mike. Tonight I would like to talk about briefly a subject that has been on my mind throughout the day. Um, And I guess throughout this last week, maybe, too. And... The subject is the, the subject that Paul focused on much of his ministry, and that was the finished work of Jesus Christ. I've done many sub, I've done many messages on that over the last 16 years, but that was really the focus of Paul's ministry was Christ and Him crucified, buried and risen again coming back for his people. And a lot of people believe, say they believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ, but they believe in a different atonement than what the Bible teaches. They believe in an atonement that makes uh, Christ's work on the cross available to everybody. And and, and the only thing that brings it into fruition is the free will of man accepting Jesus Christ died for their sins. But Jesus Christ said that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and no man can pluck them out of my hand. And Jesus said, I gave my life for the sheep. He did not say he gave his life for all men without exception. And I've said this many, many times over the years. You know, if Jesus Christ died for everyone without exception, I will guarantee that you that everyone will be in heaven, including Judas and Esau. Okay, and the Amalekites, 
and all the Girgashites and the Hittites and, and all of those heathen that, that God told the slay in the Old Testament. Doesn't that seem rather preposterous to you? That the Apostle Paul can say the children being not yet born, not having done any good or evil, for the purpose of God according to election might stand. He said, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Now the question is, did he die for Esau? Being that he hated him. And also there's a passage in the Gospels. I even heard a primitive Baptist minister get up and say that, that he thinks that Judas might be in heaven. And the Bible says that he went to his place. And it wasn't heaven. Okay. Another place it was said that it had been better that he hadn't even been born. But the scripture might well be fulfilled. He was a vessel of wrath who betrayed Christ. Okay? Stole Christ for 30 pieces of silver. Well, Jesus Christ's death is effectual, meaning it's effective for all for whom he died for. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, did Christ die for us? Did he die for you? Did he die for me? And how can we know with most certainty that he did die for us? No one was worthy of his dying and shedding his blood. No one was worthy. We were all born and conceived in sin. The Bible tells us there's none righteous, no, not one. Well, I tell you what God used uh, helped me a great deal. The Holy Spirit used the passage of Scripture to convince me that I was one of his children. And that was John 6. 37, which says, All that the Father has given him will come to him, and all that come to him he will no wise cast out. And the thing that struck me about that passage wasn't the fact that I had come to Christ. What struck me about the passage is that even though I had come to him, the fact is, that since I had come to him, that the evidence of since I had come to him, I was given to him by the Father before I, before he made me willing in the day of his power to come to him. Okay? And so, that's good to know that we have, many times we've departed, we've veered off course, we find ourselves coming to sin, but God always brings us back to a point of repentance. It's good to know. And it's good to know that when he returns again, that he will call his elect children home who the Father has given to him. So that's what's on my mind today, the simple, pure, unadulterated gospel of Christ. May God be with you this weekend. God bless you. Oh, no.